So students, we've talked about carbon dating in the past, and I know it's kind of a tricky concept to get. So here's a, a way to think about carbon dating. Let's think about ice for a second. We have, in my hand right here, a block of ice of science. And I know it's a little funny looking, you can kind of see a cube, it's a bunch of them all frozen together from our science freezer. So this is the ice of science. Uh, now you guys can tell if we start this big, slowly it's going to melt and we're going to see less and less ice. So I'm going to go over near the board and we're going to stare at it for a little while and see how it melts, okay? So we've got our chunk of ice right here. Now wait on, wait just a second and we can watch it melt. Oh good, all right. So now we finally had it melt down enough, but that took a long time, right? Thankfully we could edit it out to be a little faster, obviously. Uh, but to watch it melt from a something this size down to that size, we can judge, depending on how quickly ice melts, how long it's been sitting there. Even if you didn't know how much time I took out of that video, uh, or didn't know, you know, how long the ice had been there, if we know the first size of an ice cube and we find it a long time later and it's very small, as long as we know how fast it's melting, you can guess how long it's been there. Now, yeah, made the sink. All right, carbon dating works in a similar way, is that inside living things, there's a certain amount of a type of carbon called carbon-14, which you can do as C14. Carbon-14 is a little bit different from normal carbon, which carbon is what, just like in carbon film fossils, carbon is a natural element, uh, one of the more common ones on Earth where carbon-based life forms and carbon is the same stuff in your pencils in the form of graphite, or if we take carbon and push it together really, really hard, it becomes a diamond, which I know some of you are after diamond rings, uh, or you know diamonds in general. You need to get your bling on. So we've got C14. It starts off in our body. It's not a chunk like the ice cube, but that's kind of how you can think of it, is that we have a certain amount of carbon-14 in us. So we start with a big block that is, you know, that size, if we took all the carbon-14 in our body and pushed it together, we'd have a certain amount of carbon-14. Now, carbon-14 has something called a half-life. Anything that's radioactive will melt, basically like an ice cube, or shoot off radiation, will melt half its size, or melt to half its size, in a certain amount of time. So, for carbon-14, I think it's 5,730 years, or 370 years, somewhere in there. But if it's about 5,000 years, every 5,000 years, it will go from its first size to half size. Then after another 5,000 years, so we'll just do oh, 5K right here, it will go to half of that size. There you go. So every 5,000 years, or 5,370 years, the amount of carbon left in us shrinks by half. So we know that if we start off with something that has this much carbon-14, and we know roughly how much carbon-14 any living thing has when it dies, because we compare it to some other chemicals, but if I find something that's dead, that I know when it was living, so live, 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 I put live, we'll go with live. So if we have live, when it's alive, oh, that makes a little more sense, here we go. When it's alive, it has this much carbon-14. If I find that it only has this much in it, I know that it has been dead for 5,000 plus 5,000 or 10,000 years. But if I find that dead thing and it only has this much carbon in it, I know that it's been dead for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30,000 years because it has a very little bit of carbon-14 in it. So scientists can find something that was alive, measure how much carbon-14 is in it, and that is radioactive dating because carbon-14, kind of like an ice cube, melts away half at a time. 